And finally, new rule, Democrats must thank President Biden for his great service to America and then move him into a more ceremonial role. <laughs> Let me finish. Joe Biden has been president now for a year and a day. The day was pretty good. But the year? <laughs> Not horrible, certainly better than the alternative, but for some reason, America has lost its faith in Joe. Sometimes that just happens. A new CBS poll has just over a quarter of Americans saying the country is going in the right direction, and the Quinnipiac poll has Biden's year one approval rating at 33%, the lowest for any president ever, even Trump. 33%. If he were a movie, he'd be listed as certified rotten. <laughs> now, of course, he's not, and what's gone wrong is certainly not all Joe's fault. But the hard fact is, even when Joe does something good, he seems to get no credit. Our economy is actually pretty awesome considering what we've just been through. Wages are up. Workers have more leverage. We avoided a recession. Stocks just had their best year since 1995, and yet only 38% approve of his handling of the economy. This is what happens when you lack passionate defenders, as opposed to Trump, who every day shit the bed and 90% of Republicans blame the bed. <laughs> and... Biden may well have even further to fall because there's no die-hard Biden base. His is a coalition of the unenthused. No one ever fainted during one of his speeches or claimed Biden was appointed by God or asked him to sign their tits. <laughs> when he first got into office, I told you that Biden was like non-dairy creamer. Nobody's first choice, but he got the job done. He did get the job done in 2020 when his nation needed him to beat Trump, and he did. But... <laughs> but fair or not, to most people now, it looks like Joe Biden's get up and go got up and went. There's no big dick energy coming out of the Democratic <laughs> Party. And their bench is so thin, they're even talking about running Hillary again. And, I, and I'm sure she's thinking, well, who else you got? <laughs> Kamala, her approval rating is lower than Biden's. Bernie's too old, and Pete's too young, and this didn't work out. <laughs> but... <clears throat> but there is one guy all Democrats could rally behind and would love to see back in the White House. Yeah. Now... Yeah. Now, of course, you're saying, but Obama can't be president again. He's had two terms, and that's the rule. Yeah, the rule. You know, politics, often called the art of the possible, really has now become the art of whatever you can get away with. Something only Republicans seem to realize. Like when they just made up that presidents can't appoint a Supreme Court justice in an election year. Or when they changed their mind and said, oh, wait, they can when our side is in power. <laughs> Here's Mitch McConnell telling us in 2016 that he's not, not even going to give Obama Supreme Court pick a hearing because there's only eight months to the election. American people need to weigh in and decide who's going to make this decision. Not this lame duck president on the way out the door, but the next president next year. And here he is on whether they'd fill a seat if there was an opening during Trump's last year in office. The Supreme Court justice will die next year. What would you do? Oh, we'd fill it. <laughs> and then they did, eight days before an election. To them, hypocrisy is not a bug, it's a feature. They're all about grinning in the mirror as they shove it up your ass, like Jesus would do. <laughs> that is the essence of Trumpism. 
You want to see my tax returns? Show me where that's written down. You want me to concede when I lose? That's just a tradition. Now here at Real Time, as a way to describe this phenomenon, we like to remember Gus. That's the 70s Disney movie about a mule named Gus who <laughs> gets signed by a football team to kick field goals with his powerful leg because there was nothing specifically in the rule book <laughs> that said a team couldn't sign and play a mule. Trump, Trump pulled a Gus every day when he was in the White House. not divesting his businesses, making his son-in-law our de facto prime minister, filling cabinet departments with acting secretaries so they wouldn't have to undergo being approved by the Senate, screwing with the post office to make it harder to vote. All presidents pardon some shady people, but he was the first to say, fuck it, I'll give it to myself. <laughs> what the Democrats have to do now is their version of a Gus, and it goes like this. Biden and Obama must divorce their wives, not leave them, just officially, legally, <laughs> divorce them. Then Biden will gay marry Obama. <laughs> thereby putting him back in the White House. Yes, the law, the law says Obama can't be president again, but there's nothing that says he can't be first lady. <laughs> and if Obama was back as Biden's husband, the Democratic Party would get its mojo back and we'd have confidence that the person really running the show was the person we really want running the show. And Biden, of course, would still have value like that extra pope they keep in Rome. <laughs> when Obama <laughs> did something good, Joe could stand behind him and say, this is a big fucking deal. <laughs> Historians say that when Woodrow Wilson had a stroke, his wife, Edith, secretly ran the country for a year and a half. Can Democrats do it again? Say it with me. Yes, we can. <laughs> Except... <laughs> Except this time, do it proudly with that smug Mitch McConnell look on your face, like, yeah, we know it's wrong and never been done, but that's all secondary to fucking you and loving it. <laughs> Don't whine that... Oh, but Biden and Obama aren't really gay. Yes, that's the whole point. <laughs> Although... <laughs> Although if the two of them ever did have a slow dance while Beyonce serenaded them with that last, <laughs> I'm sure MSNBC would explode into rainbow skittles. <laughs> but... But that's, that's, that's not where we're going with this. This is, not, this is not about gay. This is about showing that Democrats can play by Gus rules, too. Trump lost the popular vote in both of his elections and still got to put three judges on the Supreme Court. So don't ask me to feel bad about First Lady Barack Obama. <laughs> I mean, what's the big deal, Mitch? In America, the First Lady always gets a pet project she feels passionate about. Laura Bush had literacy, and uh, Michelle Obama had fitness, and Melania had anti-bullying. Really. <laughs> Obama will be no different. It's just that his First Lady project is running the federal government. <laughs>